Hey guys, it's Crypt Trader again. In this week's video, I want to discuss a few updates on the UI and then one of the simple strategies I have used to make over 400,000 Digitex trading the last two months. So getting into one of the UI upgrades I noticed last week after we did the exchange maintenance is up here. If you look at the top right next to the load up button, you have the start button now. And if you click that, what you'll notice is it's actually a walkthrough of getting started on the exchange. So if you're new to the exchange and you're just getting started either on testnet or mainnet, you have this option up here to walk you through what you need to do. So you can set, select your appearance, uh, select which side you want the ladder to be on, you know, your graph type that's going to show up here next to the ladder. And you can select all of that and then move on. So it kind of helps you walk through and set everything up. And if you haven't deposited any Digitex, um, you can use this buy Digitex link and it takes you to where you can buy Digitex from the treasury by sending Ethereum uh, to that smart contract and receiving Digitex back. So that's nice to get you through and get you onboarded so that you have the Digitex you need to trade with. And then you keep going here and you have these different tabs you can select, uh, you know, if you want to go through and explore what you have basically just up here showing you right here and so then you can go on and select your leverage and so you can have that set so that you're ready to go to start trading it shows you how many contracts that you can trade with depending on what leverage you set and then you can select testnet or mainnet and then start trading and so there are two functionality things that are being worked on right now behind the scenes for the most part uh, you have the API which will allow for bots to be traded on here so that's going to help a lot with liquidity uh, to thicken up these order books and to reduce some of these wicks that we have where the price can go much lower you know the futures price can go much lower than what spot is or much higher depending on which way it's spiking so the API will definitely help with that and then stop loss and take profit which was on the test net uh, being tested on there there's some things that we spotted uh, and so that's being worked on as well. And so those are the two things that I'm looking forward to for mainnet. And whenever those stop loss and take profit orders are ready, I'll do a video on that to explain how to use them properly. But until then, just continue to monitor your trades closely if you're on mainnet so that you don't get caught off guard. Uh, you don't need to leave the computer if you're going to be into a trade or if you are going to leave the computer and be in a trade, make sure you use low leverage and only risk small amounts of margin so that if you do get liquidated, it's not going to be very detrimental to your account. <laughs> Alright, so now I want to show you one of the strategies that I've always used and has worked very, very well on Digitex the last two months uh, that's helped me make that 400,000 Digitex. Uh, and what it is, is when the market moves, it moves in waves. And so you have these waves like this, you correct, wave, correct, wave, and then correct. And now we're correcting this correction right here could be more of a correction for this whole move up. And so since I'm on a five minute, uh, you can see all these little mini waves in here. And then this is a correction of this whole move from the low right here. And so what I like to do is I look for uh, the signs of exhaustion on these waves. So like this wave moving up, I look for the signs of exhaustion to short. This move up, I look for signs of exhaustion to short here. You can also trade the trend so like when it's trending up you can just buy all these pullbacks but this is just one of the strategies that I like to do and that's to counter trend trade and look for the exhaustion it just works well for me uh, it's not for everybody but this is just one of the strategies that I use and so what I look for is whenever we have a move uh, like this what, what you want to do is put some structure on it and so normally when it's trending it's going to have somewhat of a structure to it and you can see that We've had higher lows here and uh, higher highs. And so you, you get somewhat of a wedge, wedging pattern like this. And what I like to look for is the breakdown of that and then the first retrace. And that's what I would like to short. And so what you need to do is use the Fib Retrace tool for that. And the Fib Retrace tool is the third one down over here on your toolbar. And then go down to Fib Retracement. And you can hit the little star. That way it shows up right here as one of your favorite tools up here. So you don't have to go over here every time but click Fibber Trace and what you want to do is you want to start from the high because we're wanting to short because we broke down out of this market structure in this trend and we think we're going to have a deeper pullback. Um, what we want to do is pull from the high so click right here at the top of that wick you always want to go from the wick so the top of that wick you pull from left to right and top down for a short so come down to this bottom wick right here because that's the low that we made after we broke down out of here 
So basically, whenever we put this low in right here and we start moving up, you can draw this fibra trace and start looking for fib levels that you want to short at up here. So let me zoom in even more because I know this is small. Let me actually hide the volume as well because it's uh, taking up some space for us. Um, so what you want to look at here is actually what I do is I short between the 0.5 and the 618. And so <clears throat> whenever I do that, when I short the 0.5 to 618 on a market structure break like this in a trend, normally where I'm going to target is the negative 236. Uh, and I'll put that in green and so what I would do is get in a short here and target down here You can see we didn't quite make it on this push down. We actually came back up to the 786 before we realized Before we ultimately realized the target down here uh, at the 236 and You don't have to target the 236. It all depends on what kind of risk to reward you want And so what we can do is use the risk to reward tool, which is over here. It's like the fifth one down you can click that and for a short position and click where our entry would be, which would be at the 0.5. That's where I would like to short uh, between the 0.5 and 618, but I'll put it right on the 0.5. Put the stop above the 786. You can see that this wicked up. Uh, and, and this is kind of a rare occurrence because normally uh, the 786 holds, especially when it goes to the 236, but you might want to put your stop about a, a tick or two above the 786. And then you can, uh, let me tighten this wrist to reward tool up here and then target the negative 236 down here and so you can see it gives you a risk to reward right here that's what this number is 2.18 so what that means is you, you only have you don't have to be right but less than 30 percent of the time around 30 percent of the time you need to be right for this to be a profitable strategy and from my experience it works very very often and you get a you get an excellent risk to reward in most cases now let me zoom out and I'll show you another example. Let me clear those tools here. We'll zoom out. I'll show you another example. So on this up move here, so we had this strong move up and we had all these little micro pullbacks and we eventually topped out right here. And so what you can do there is put structure on this. So what we have is uh, we have higher lows and higher highs and then once we break that structure the first thing that we want to do is get ready to pull our fib retrace from the top right here down to wherever the low is whenever this starts to retrace back up pull it to the low there and in this case what we would do is the same thing as we did in the last setup broke market structure to the downside we pull our retrace from tick to tick, so top down, left to right with the fib retrace tool, and we're looking to short the uh, between the 0.5 and 618. And so I normally put my uh, I, I normally put my orders at the 0.5. And so in this case, you would have gotten filled right here. Your stops above the 786, and we don't quite meet target at the negative 236. And so this is just how trading goes. If you want to have a higher win rate, you could always target the the pivot low here. So from where this fib retrace is uh, pulled from, you can target the pivot low and your win rate will be higher, but your risk to reward will be lower. So it, it ends up balancing out and it's still profitable. I've noticed to target the pivot uh, low here. I typically just target the negative 236 and then if we do get a reaction, then I decide if I want to scale out of my position. Just today, we've had a market structure break here. If you look at all these higher lows that we put in here, whenever we broke that, what you can do is pull your FIB from the, the uh, pivot high up here, from the top down, left to right. So top down, left to right, down to the pivot low right here. And what you see is we came up into the 0.5 to 618 right here. And I actually got filled on the move up to the 0.5 right here. I wasn't gonna target the, Z, the pivot low or the negative 236 because this was a little more of a range that we broke out of and not really an uptrend like the previous two examples. It's more of just a sideways range that we broke out of. So what I did is I entered the 0.5 and then I targeted the 0.5 on the move down. So what I mean by that is if you take this off, so I got in here and then you can pull your pivot from the pivot low from left to right, but in this case I'm going from the bottom up. And so I go up to that pivot high right here where uh, it topped out above where I entered and then I exit at the 0.5 on this move down and so you would expect support right here and like I said the reason that I did this is because 
we were breaking out of more of a range and it wasn't more of an uptrend that we were breaking down out of. If it was an uptrend that we were breaking down out of like this, uh, that market structure break, then I would have been looking to take profit at a lower target. But since it's more of a range that we broke down out of, I consider this as con a continued range uh, once we break down. So I don't want to target lower levels. I'm just going to target a pullback of this local swing right here. And so that was a nice trade that I took this morning. So basically all you have to do is look for the market structure look for market structure especially in a trend like this when it breaks and then target that first pullback uh, for a short entry the same goes in the opposite scenario too if we were downtrending you can do the exact same thing in a downtrend so what I can do if I invert this you know you can see what it would be like in a downtrend if we were in a downtrend then you wait for the breakout you buy the first pullback and so that's just an example of how you can do it in a downtrend as well and so I hope this video really helps you uh, I challenge you to go and look for examples like this in the market and just get some practice with it and you'll be surprised how often that it occurs. If you want more tips and tricks and see me live trade, come join my uh, YouTube channel at Crypt Trader Trading Academy. And I do, I try to do one or two videos a week where I live trade and I plan to make some more instructional videos in the future as well. Alright guys, I'll see you next time.